Sziasztok! Van hang? Hang? Nagyszerű! Sok szeretettel köszöntelek itt benneteket a mai koszpélyes vendégbeszélgetésünkön. Ugye egy nagyon híres koszpélyest hoztunk ma el nektek, aki nem más lesz, mint Maul Németországból. Please come to the stage! Okay, okay. Yes. Nagy tapsot kérek szépen neki! Thank you very much! Oh. Oh. So, um, we would like to, I think everyone is interested in to know how did your career start? How did this world cosplating start for you? Okay, yeah, that's a story I always tell a lot. It's uh, because of my sister. 20 years ago, my sister was a cosplayer. And um, I, I went, she, she was alone at a convention. And um, because of all of her friends canceled and she asked me if I want to come with her. And then I, I went to that convention with her and I, uh, I had to improvise my first costume overnight. It uh, was The Crow from, um, do you know Brandon Lee, The Crow? Do you know the movie? That was my first costume. It was just black and white makeup and just a coat. And I liked it, walking around in a costume. And um, there's a lot more to that story, but let's skip it to the career part, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. so that was your first costume. So you did like the convention? You did like what's happening? Yeah, there? yeah. So, no. <laughs> It, it wasn't really a costume because it was improvised. My first real costume was Darth Maul from Star Wars. So I made this. And that's why my name is Maul Cosplay because this was my first costume. And uh, so the career part, you want to know how that started? Okay, there are two things. Uh, the first thing is I went to Gamescom. Anybody knows Gamescom? You, who, who, who have been to, to Gamescom? Ever been there? You've been to Gamescom? Okay. Sorry? Oh, you met me. Catch, catch the mic. Van itt egy mikrofonunk elől. Here's a mic. So when you, when you speak here, I can hear you better. I just told you that I met uh, Hideo Kojima there. Ah, yeah. I, I, I went to... Uh, when? Which year? Uh, when was that? Oh my God, it's so far back in time. 2015? Uh, no. No. Earlier. Earlier. Yes. Okay. I think 2000. And... I don't. Know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm really bad at dates. It's okay. So you met Hideo Kojima. Yes, yeah. I went there uh, because of him. But I ah. saw a lot of cosplayers there for the first time. Okay, for the first time. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. So now for you're the, a cosplayer the, yourself. Great. For the people who don't know, like Gamescom is the biggest video game show in Europe, I think. Yeah, We I would say, say Gamescom is the biggest gaming convention in the world. Because I grew up with Gamescom and I thought, okay, it's a convention, it's nice, it's kind of big. And I always wanted to go to LA to uh, E3. And I thought this is the biggest gaming convention, but uh, then I went there and was super small. I was so disappointed. And then I found out that Gamescom is the biggest in the world. It's quite interesting. So, the career part. The career part, yeah, yes. I went to Gamescom, I think in 2014, just for fun in my Star Wars outfits, and we went by the EA booth, and they promoted uh, Knights of the Old Republic. And they saw us, me and my wife, and they said, hey, you, come on stage. And then they hired us immediately for some shows in Sweden, I guess. A, you have a movie. You Sorry? have a movie with Darth Maul. A movie. I did a movie. Yes. Yeah, I did. Yeah. But that was later. That is later. Yeah, so it's much not later. The same, it's not the same question. No, it's not the same so. thing. And then we realized, okay, uh, they hired us. And then we thought, okay, that could be a job. That's how we thought it can be a job. And then uh, the social media thing started with uh, Geralt of Rivia, of course when we did a makeup test, uh, posted the makeup test, and um, then we got an email from CD Projekt. But I, th I didn't know CD Projekt. For the people who don't know, CD Projekt is the publisher of The Witcher. And just a week after we posted one picture of the makeup test, they sent me an email. But I didn't know that CD Projekt is the publisher. And I, They asked me for an event in Italy, for a YouTuber event, for the release of Blood and Wine. And I thought, that's just a YouTuber event, it has nothing to do with the game. And I was about writing an email and saying, oh no, I'm sorry, I can't come, I'm, I don't have time. But then we googled it, so who is CD Projekt? And then we found out, okay, that's a publisher. And then we... You changed, you changed my, your mind really quickly. Sorry? You changed your mind. Really yeah, yeah, then yes. of course we deleted, we already wrote the email where we said, oh no, we can't come. 
And then we deleted everything and said, hey, yeah, dear Gosha, that was her name. Of course, we would love to come. And then we did the uh, event in Italy. And after we posted the first pictures of the whole costume, um, it was in one week, I had almost 100,000 followers on Facebook. So that's how it all started with the social media thing. Yeah, long story. No, now you good, know, now you know. So what's <laughs> yes. the next question? The next question, you, I guess, know you have a workshop, but when yeah. you started, like, you didn't have a workshop, right? So how did it sp start small and then it grew bigger and bigger? Mm -hmm. And you have a workshop now, and, but like your home, you are crafting everything in your home? Or? So, so I started uh, like every other cosplayer. Um, I started in my living room building that stuff and uh, the living room or in a con crunch like any other room looks like shit in the days before a convention so that's how we lived for years because we did that a lot and later uh, in my in my flat um, I um, I had a workshop but my my bedroom was the workshop so I had no bedroom anymore so but I had a, I had a separate room and then, yeah, then we moved to our first um, building. There was a whole company building. Uh, and there we had the first workshop. And now I have an even bigger workshop. It's separated to the, uh, to the house, which is good because, you know, everybody, you know the fumes and stuff. You're sleeping in the fumes and you're sleeping in the chaos. And now it's better because the chaos is only in the workshop and our home is nice. So that's a big advantage. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, when you are choosing characters, like how do you choose your next character? The beard. Sorry? The beard. Really? It's the beard. Okay. <laughs> I'm checking out the characters so and the character then, oh, this one, this one has a beard. We can do that. <laughs> okay. And no, it's, it's not a joke. It's not a joke. Uh, when we did The Witcher, for example, uh, I just saw the poster of Geralt of Rivia and said, oh, this, this guy looks cool and he has a beard. Let's do it. And I... I haven't played the game then. I didn't know anything about The Witcher. Just, he looks cool. That was everything I knew. And then the, the first two years when I worked for CD Projekt, almost two years, I never played the game. I didn't, when I worked for the first time for CD Projekt in Italy, I didn't even know that his name was Geralt. And people came up to me and like, hey, hey, you look cool. Jennifer or Tris? And I'm like, I, I have no idea what you're talking about, so I had no clue. But now, I played 40% of The Witcher. It's a big game, I still have to finish it, but it's kind of my duty and I will finish it. But uh, yeah, when I choose the characters, it's the beard. Okay. Do you have any favorite materials to work with? So when you are, you cho you are choosing the character and how do you start the crafting? Do you have any favorites? Yeah, my, my absolute favorite material is... Um, it's not one material, but I like uh, molding and casting. So I do a lot of silicon molds and cast the stuff. It's, uh, it's resin, sometimes it's silicon, sometimes a flexible resin. But I love the process to pour something liquid in the mold and then later it's solid. Like, like for example, these parts here or the medallion, it's all casted. And the swords are casted, so it's all resin. Uh, but yeah, sometimes it's silicon. Sometimes you need it flexible and then you cast it in silicon. Hey, can, I, can I get my, my tiny bag? Because there's my little fan inside. Can I, can I have my tiny bag? It's somewhere there. Yeah, I need that. Yeah, Thank you very much. It's so hot here on stage. I have, I have my tiny fan with me. Oh, yes, yes. Much better. <laughs> See? Okay. Yeah. It's fantastic, right? Yes, yeah. I, I love that. I should sell those because every time I do this, everybody's like, oh my God, that's so good. And in the future, I would say, yeah, 20 bucks. Yes, mm -hmm. You can have yeah. it. It's a business. And then I bring hundreds. Yes, that's <laughs> right. It's a business. So next So time. next question. Okay, so you did mention that you are not... <laughs> you are not alone in your workshop. You mentioned your wife. Yeah. And is she cosplaying? Yeah, sometimes my wife uh, does cosplay. Sometimes uh, we met uh, through cosplay. And she was a cosplayer too, but uh, as it became our job, um, and I became the face, main, yes. the, That's right. the main yeah. thing, because when we, when we uh, build a costume, it's basically for me, and she does it, she, she doesn't do it 
very often, uh, sometimes. We did it for Cyberpunk, she was female V, we did it for Ubisoft, for Assassin's, Assassin's Creed um, Valhalla, she was female Eivor, and um, yeah, but not really just for fun. You, when it's a job and the publisher asks us to do that, sometimes she does it, but just for fun, almost never. <laughs> Yeah, but you mentioned several people from our workshop, so usually it's my wife and me. We are, we are working on every costume and every project together every time, and then we have two other people. We have a tailor and a 3D artist. We don't need them all the time, but sometimes with a big project, we are four in my workshop. Yeah, and I guess uh, when you get requests from companies yeah. often, so you have deadlines, oh, deadlines yeah. to meet. So. Yeah, we have huge deadlines. That's the worst part about uh, this job because you have to get it done. You have to get the costume done on, on, this, on this date. And sometimes, or very often, it, ne uh, it means uh, several nights without sleep. But you know that, right? Cosplay Con crunch, the, the, the costume, get it done for a convention. Um, who, who spent one night without sleep to get a cosplay done? Who did that before? Hands up, higher. Higher, so you can see that. Ki yeah, ki see? Ki so you know the drill. You know, no sleep, get the cosplay done for a convention. Everybody knows that. And the job, when you, when you do it as a job, um, then it's sometimes three days without sleep, or the last three weeks, maybe four hours of sleep. So it's uh, fun. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> huge fun, yes. Okay, so how is your, like, your family? Like how is your, fami the, your family, like uh, mother, father, like how do they see you now that you are a big star? Like what did they think about cosplay when you started and what do they think now that it's your job? Yeah, so uh, I already told uh, that my sister was a cosplayer before me, so, so they were already fine with it. But I have to say when I started cosplay stuff, I was already 25, so 20, let's say 22. So I was already grown up, so they didn't say anything about it because it's, it's my life, I'm an adult, so do what you want. And then, of course, when, it, when I became successful with it, they, they were happy. They're proud. So, yeah, yeah, they're so proud that's of it. You. Of course. So, so my parents were fine with it, but uh, the parents of my wife, they were like, oh, what is that? What are they doing all the time? But then when it, when it got successful and the money came, they were fine with it, <laughs> of course. Um, let's talk about a bit about your. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> Twenty bucks? No. Okay. Let's let's talk a bit about your makeup. Like, how much time do you need to get prepared for a makeup like this? Okay, it doesn't look like much, but uh, for this I need three hours. I'm very slow. Three hours. Usually my wife does the makeup when she travels with me. She does the makeup, so I I can do Geralt, and. If I had no beard, I could do Darth Maul again or The Crow, but nowadays uh, I do Geralt and v. v, but V is not much makeup. So it takes three hours. My wife needs only 90 minutes for this, but it's the color of the beard, it's the scars, glue on the wig and uh, the whole contouring because I look different from yeah, It's a very complicated normal. thing yeah. to change the face. It takes time, yeah. Three hours. So, so I got up this morning at four Oh, um, 4, 4 yeah. a.m. for this day. Yeah. Let's, let's uh, get Just an applause for you. because I got up 4 a.m. Thank you, thank you. Just for you. <laughs> uh, I had my next question, but I lost it. Oh, yeah. Do you have a favorite costume? I'm confusing the microphone and the fan. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> okay. So, what was the question? What's your favorite costume? Oh, that's a tough question. Because, of course, I have a favorite costume crafting-wise, where I say, okay, the craftsmanship is uh, very good on this one. For example, Kratos from God of War, our latest one. Usually, always the latest one is the best one, but, uh, of course, I have a lot of history with uh, this one, uh, because it started my whole career. I traveled the world with it. We did a lot of commercial stuff with CD Projekt. So it's a, a good history. But my favorite, my favorite characters... Wait a second. My favorite ca characters are Joel from The Last of Us and Arthur Morgan uh, from Red Dead Redemption. And for example, we've been to the US uh, last June 
traveled 7,000 miles and visited the best Wild West locations from the game. And yeah, that's a really, really good experience to, to be a cowboy in the Wild West. So the real deal, uh, we've been to grizzly territory with bobcats and buffaloes. So we saw a steam train, we took pictures there. We've been to the swarms with the alligators. So I really felt like a cowboy because it was the real location. So there's a lot of uh, emotion uh, and history with this costume. So I, I really love putting on my Arthur Morgan cosplay. But I, I can tell you which one is the worst, but the very best is hard to tell. Okay, tell me which one is the worst then. Yeah, <laughs> it's Zane from Borderlands. Because it was so uncomfortable, I lost half of my toenails wearing it. Um, yeah, the shoes were very tight. I worked for, for 2K for Borderlands 3 at uh, Gamescom. And um, I told them, hey, I can walk maybe at the booth, like, like this. I can walk here, and I, I can walk here, but no, not the whole Gamescom. And of course, the first day, they let me walk over the whole Gamescom. And uh, with yeah, that crowd, with that crowd and yeah, and and it's, it's, it's huge, it's really big. And uh, then I lost half of my toenails and a lot of blisters on my feet. And I had to take painkillers all the time because I couldn't walk. So I, I was walking like this all the time, like, oh my god, ah, oh, ah, ah, ah. but I had to look cool. So as soon as I, as soon as I uh, came on stage, so backstage, I was like this. Ah, ah, oh, ah, and as soon as I entered the stage, like, yeah, no problem. Yeah, no, fine. I'm fine. Yeah, yeah, no. So it was five days. Gamescom is five days, so it's really terrible. Next question. Next question. Like, you travel a lot. You visit a lot of conventions. Do you have any funny stories or the, your favorite convention or the favorite place you ever got to while you were traveling because of cosplay? Oh, yeah, it's a good question. Um, so the funny story. Funny story is okay too, or the favorite place, or, or why, so everything that could be interesting here. So I could tell a funny story, but it's not a, a specific place. I mean, I, I've been to, to China, for example, with 48 degrees. We shot a commercial outside in this outfit. Everybody was dying, and everybody had, had five of those. And I was the only one who couldn't have one of those, because they were filming all the time. But that's not a funny story. A funny story uh, is... Um, when I worked at uh, Gamescom for Metal Gear Phantom Pain. And um, yeah, you know the character, he has an eye patch and he has this uh, horn here on the head and uh, he's bleeding. So this is how the char character looked at my wife. She cosplayed Quiet and Quiet looked battle damaged as well, a lot of blood and stuff. And we, we traveled home from Gamescom over the Autobahn. And I was a little bit of sleeping, my wife was driving, and then I woke up to a scream from my wife. I looked to the front and there were two cars like flying around right in front of us. And I'm, I have to say, I'm a, I'm a stuntman, so I do, uh, or I did, I don't do that much often anymore, but uh, I'm used to car crashes because I did that as a job. And so I saw the flying cars and my wife hit the brakes and uh, then I jumped out of the car uh, ran over to the cars and pulled the people out of the car because it was a little bit burning. So I saved them as Big Boss from Metal Gear. But you forgot uh, how you look like. Yeah, I forgot how I looked like. So they were, they were fine. The medics came, the police came. And they, we were sitting in our car just waiting uh, for the street to be cleared again so that we can go home. And we were sitting with our blood there, sitting in our car, waiting. And then the first medic came to us like, hey, you, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm okay, no problem. So, okay, he, he, he left. And then the next medic came, five minutes later, you, are you really okay? Say, so, yeah, no problem, I'm fine. So we just want to go home, so okay. And then the third medic came, I'm like, what, what's the problem? We are really fine, what's the problem? And I said, yeah, and the, the injuries, the blood, is that from yesterday? They said, oh my God, and then we realized how we look. And they said, oh my God, that's, that's fake blood. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. So they were really injured people and we felt so embarrassed because we were like the cosplayers, ha, looking funny with the blood and there were people like in, in trouble. But everybody was fine. Some broken bones, but everybody survived. So everybody's, everybody's fine, but it's a funny story. I would like to give the chance to the people to ask questions. So we have this microphone over there. So if someone has a question, 
then please come come here and you can ask questions if you are brave maybe it's too, maybe it's too close we have to put it up there because they have to come no it's fine but they have to walk a long distance so, what is your question i can't hear you oh sorry can you hear me now yeah <laughs> yeah i can okay. hear you now <laughs> so uh, i saw your uh, cosplay work on days gone and i was fascinated so it's such an amazing job i immediately fell in love so could you tell us some words about that so uh, days gone right yeah, days gone. and so you just want to tell me some stuff about it no i'm asking you you tell us about it i, I really loved your days gone cosplay i really loved your days gone cosplay so thank you very much ca can you tell us a bit about it yeah, it was, a, it was just a fun project, which, which has happened very rarely these days. I try to, to make at least one costume a year just for me, because 80% of the cosplays I do is for, for publishers as a job. And that was just a fun project. So in the past years, uh, days gone, so Deacon, um, Arthur Morgan and Joel was a fun project. And usually it's then my favorite game where I make a costume of. And that was, I just wanted to make a costume in three weeks and I still had to build the bike. So for the people who don't know, I built a, a, a bike from Days Gone also in three weeks. <laughs> so that was a kind of a, of a hustle. But yeah, it was just for fun. I had this bike, I have several bikes at home and I just took this one and customized it. And Deacon is not too, too difficult to make. But there's a lot of tiny details, and um, yeah, so it was some kind of a cosplay crunch. And then we did a nice photo shoot, and I talked to, to uh, Ben Studios, because I couldn't see the tattoos in the game. And it's always interesting to, to know that when you, sometimes you just ask the publisher, hey, can you give me some, some details, because I can't see the, the tattoos in the game. And they just sent me all the files from the game, so I could see all the tattoos and then I printed them out and put them on so we have the real stuff that was really nice so really nice people yeah and then we went to the location with the bike it, it didn't run it was just from the looks and I had to to uh, push it to the location so two two or three kilometers through the sand to the location though so that was hard but yeah I, I really like the pictures and uh, it's a really good game so you played it thank you very much you're very welcome we're welcome. Okay, anyone else? Hi. Hello. So I saw that you did Superman not too long ago, and that was a really big dream of yours, I know. And do you have any other dream cosplays that you want to do in the future? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So for the people who don't know, I did a Superman cosplay um, a few months ago. So I didn't make the costume. Somebody made it for me. Uh, their name is Parallel Life Studios, and they are um, experts in superhero stuff. And they are friends, so they made the suit for me. But I always wanted to make the Superman suit. So for the people who don't know, we had a huge crane, um, and I was hanging 70 meters in the sky, taking pictures, so no green screen. And we had a helicopter, so I'm holding the helicopter, because in the movie, He's saving people from the helicopter, and we had a car, so I was flying around with the car. That always was my dream uh, photo shoot. So I always wanted to do that since I was a little boy. And now I did that, so I, at the moment I don't really have a huge dream anymore because now I did pretty much all of it. Like last year, the Red Dead Redemption photo shoot in the US. Um, but I don't know if you know that. Uh, Who is into musicals? You? Do you know Starlight Express? Yeah? So Greaseball. Greaseball is one of my dream cosplays. And then I want to go there to the real stage and take the pictures there on the real Starlight Express stage. <laughs> yeah, it's, I hope maybe this year. So I, I'm trying. But it's on the list for many years now. But I will make a, a little a grown-up version because I still need my beard. And uh, so he will look a little bit more like a, like a transformer. So a little bit more rough and more armor, a little bit more. So I hope you will like it then. <laughs> You're welcome. So, an, oh, that's a question. No, you're taking my mic away. Okay. Bye-bye, Mike. Oh, thank you. Now I, now I have a problem. So maybe you can hold that. Thank you. You're great. Ah, very good. Thank you. Hello. I have my personal mic here. I can't hear you. Is the mic on? I think it's on. Uh, so now I can hear you. Hi. I love your work, first of all. Thank but you very much. I have a question about your tattoos. You have several tattoos. The, does they make it difficult for a cosplay 
do you have to conceal them or hide it under the, the cosplay or something? Yeah, uh, thank you very much, first of all. Um, yeah, it is, it is a problem sometimes. Um, so when, when I need it, I cover it up. Yeah, so I always... With heavy makeup, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So for example, when we did the uh, naked Geralt in the bathtub, we have to cover all of them. And that uh, all in all, with the scars and everything, and cover all the tattoos, it takes 11 hours. So we did a photo shoot, and we had to start with the makeup the day before to be ready for the next day. Yeah, it uh, kind of sucks, but it is like that. I, don't, I mean, of course, now I don't cover it, but it's not too bad. Your uh, hair covers it for you. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> but, but when I take pictures and you see it, then I cover it. But for a convention, I don't really need it. It's, it's fine. Nobody complains. But uh, as Joel, for example, with the, just the shirt, um, you can see the whole forearm, then I cover it. But sometimes I prefer just a different version. For example, Arthur Morgan, uh, usually when he just wears his blue shirt, I also have the jacket. And sometimes I don't want to cover it. I just wear the jacket, and then you can see the tattoos. Yeah. But uh, you, you know the drill, I guess. Yeah, sometimes, yeah, it sucks a little bit. Yeah. But I don't, I, I want it in my real life, so I'm always going for more tattoos. So you would never choose cosplay over tattoos? No, not really. I, I mean, I, I think I, I, maybe I would do something more in the face, not directly. So I have some tattoos on my head here, and uh, you see a little bit of it right here uh, uh, over the ear. Not so, from here, but okay. Yeah, <laughs> you can't really see it. But I would do a little bit more without cosplay, but I have to think about it. So the face would be a bigger problem. The bigger so priority in your face. Sorry? The face is the bigger priority. Over yeah, the exactly. So we can skip that, but the rest of the body, I will go for more tattoos. Oh, you will be covered head to toe. <laughs> yeah, one day. But it, it hurts. It hurts yeah, a lot. And the, I know that. Yeah, and the older you get, the more it hurts. When I was 20, I, I was like, yeah, no problem. Yeah, give me, a, give me that tattoo. And now it's like, oh my God, <laughs> what am I doing? So because the whole sleeve is uh, still not done, I started with it uh, 2014. And uh, every time I go there again for another session, I'm like, oh my God, what did I do? So <laughs> I know your pain. Thank yeah. you very much. <laughs> You're very welcome. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. It's awesome. I, I changed size because I am not a gymnastic girl, so <laughs> yeah. my left hand got tired, so I am doing but it with my right hand. You're doing a great job. Thank, Thank you, you very much. So, next question. I now know when was the games coming. It was 2007. Oh. That's some long time ago. Yes. So, that, was it in Cologne then? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Because they moved from Leipzig to Cologne. Yes. Uh, but it, it was around that time. So, maybe in 2006 they changed it to Cologne. Very well, good. You met Hideo Kojima. I met him too. He's uh, in LA in, uh, in our cyberpunk um, business area uh, when I was there for, for Cyberpunk CD Project. He was there and he, he had his own screening. So he was like the king of Japan. And he entered our uh, room for the first trailer of Cyberpunk and the first gameplay trailers because uh, it was only for, for VIPs. And usually there were like 50 people in that room, but when he showed up, it was only him, nobody else in the room. So he was like the king, special yes. screening. He is, he is. Um, and for the question, um, sorry, I got the question from my, Take your time. From my friend. So uh, how do you deal with uh, criticism? criticism? Uh, like um, how you said you, don't really know always the show or the game, uh, just the character. And there are a lot of um, cosplayers who, who doesn't see it in a good way. That if you don't know the game and you're not a big fan or something, you, don't, uh, cos you, you shouldn't cosplay. Okay, so I never, I never experienced that. But I can say cosplay is for everybody. It's, uh, yeah, <laughs> of course it is. It is uh, just for fun. Everybody should cosplay whatever he likes or she likes. And, um, and I think when it becomes your job and you get requests from companies, then it's a different thing because you get a job, 
please cosplay this character. So you don't have always the time to play with the game or get to yeah. know the character. So this is the business yeah, side th of the thing. Th that's true. I mean, I, I think I'm in a good position because of social media fame and stuff like that. And uh, as Judith said, it's uh, when publishers ask me, I'm in a good position. But in general, cosplay is for everybody. Doesn't matter how old you are. Uh, what uh, if you're male or female uh, if you're big or tiny how old it doesn't matter do your thing do it just for fun of course when you when you post it online sometimes people are complaining but uh, everybody complains about stuff don't listen to them do your thing enjoy cosplaying because it's not about only the perfect picture on social media it's about being here loving the character maybe uh, joining the costume contest it's about fun, and if you like it, nobody can tell you otherwise. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yuriko, lehet még egy kérdés, meg közben kaptam egyet. Engedjük a többieket, és maga állj vissza a végére. Jó, jó, és akkor thank you. You're very welcome. Hi, so good Hi. to have you here in Hungary. Thank you very much for having me. I would like to add that you always start your cosplays from the scratch. What's your favorite technique in all the metal work, woodwork of everything? So what's my favorite technique? technique? You use, yes. Yeah, it's pretty much the same what I uh, told before uh, when it came to my favorite material. It's uh, casting and molding. I love the process. It's, for me, it's like a miracle. For, before it's liquid and then it's solid. I love it. And what I also love is um, the process of finding a solution <laughs> for a problem because you sometimes you have no idea how to do it and then you think about it and then you have some ideas and then you try it and usually at some point it works mm -hmm. so sometimes you have to build something crazy just to support some big wings or whatever and uh, I, I love thinking about that and finding a solution because it's a good situation because when you are successful and it looks good of you, of course, it feels good. Yeah, so it's casting and molding and finding solutions. And uh, would you like, would you answer me in character, please? Tris or Jennifer? <laughs> okay. Um, Tris. It's, it's Tris. So is that good or bad? Because it's you, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have an answer to that. So, um, so I haven't finished the game yet. So maybe I would change my mind. But when it, I always, uh, that, that sounds a little bit weird when I say that. I always wanted to date a uh, Playboy playmate. Yeah. And Tris was in the Playboy. She, she was the very first, maybe the only character, gaming character, who was in the Playboy. And so that's why I said, okay, I like Tris. First was Lara Croft. But was she naked? Almost. Yeah, Tris was naked. <laughs> so that's the thing. So, uh, uh, by the way, I told that in uh, China, the same story, and nobody laughed about it. Mm -hmm. Later I found out that, like, Playboy and s such stuff is forbidden in China. So that was the reason. Nobody laughed about it. But that's the reason I prefer Tris, the playboy. I, I'm sorry, much. it's pretty simple. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Another question. Hello. Hello. So, thank you. So, first awesome. of all, thank you so much for making the trip to Hungary. We really appreciate it. And You're very uh, welcome. <laughs> I love it here. Uh, and also, my question is that um, what is your favorite part of the cosplay making process? Like, is it the brainstorming at the table with every other people? Or is it like the making of the cosplay itself? Or is it just the, uh, putting it on and uh, going to conventions? Or uh, what's your favorite part? I would say my favorite part is um, definitely wearing it or having a cool photo shoot with it. I always go for uh, cool photo shoots. Red Dead Redemption or the, Su the Superman thing, or we went to the Chernobyl exclusion zone in 2017 for The Last of Us uh, in Pripyat. We took the pictures there. So that's my favorite part, doing something cool with the character. We did the Darth Maul movie. Um, we did a, 
live action trailer for Ubisoft, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I worked, one of my best friends, he is an action director and action designer. He is in the Jackie Chan stunt team and he works, uh, he worked on Shang-Chi, on Dune 1, Dune 2, and for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, we had stunt people from Star Wars there, the stunt guy from Kylo Ren was there, the choreographer of the Witcher Netflix series. So, of course, I am a stuntman, I do that part. I love that the most, when I can fight and do stunts in costume. That's the absolute best. But bringing the character to life, even in pictures, is my favorite part. But when it comes to crafting, usually the last week is the best part, because then everything comes together and uh, stuff you worked on for weeks or months finally are working out and you see the result of the, of the work. And that happens in the last few days. I think you know that. Oh, yeah, I know. See, and you love that too, right? Yes, yes, of course. Who there we have it. <laughs> okay, thank Great. you so much for sharing your work with us. And You're very welcome. You. See you later. Hi. Hello. Uh, first of all, my English is bad, but I'm trying to put it together. So, um, no problem. My personal favorite uh, for, from your work is, uh, oh, thank you, uh, is uh, Joel from Last of Us and uh, Gerard. And uh, I want to ask if you uh, planning a photo shoot, how do you find these uh, special or beautiful places? Like how you manage this photo shoot? Uh, I, I, I don't have a special uh, procedure to find it. Usually it's Google. <laughs> for, for Red Dead Redemption, we, had a, um, we just tried to find out the way we had to travel because we, we, we started in Texas, then we went to Louisiana, Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, Colorado, Wyoming, and then it, it had, had to make sense, the several locations. Mm -hmm. So we checked out just uh, Wyoming, nature, and then we, we saw how Wyoming looks, and then we tried to find the best spots which looks like in the game. So it's basically Google, and uh, with um, Joel, with Chernobyl. It was just an idea because I always was fascinated by that place. And um, then I said to my wife, so, hey, let's, let's shoot in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. And she was like, ha, 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 yeah, yeah, of course. And I was like, yeah, I'm serious, let's do it. And it was easier than expected, but you have to go to the government and get a, get a permission, and they, you, have several, you have to talk to the military. It, it's not super easy, but it was easier than expected. And I always just try to find the perfect location. And Google helps, but sometimes you have something in mind, and yeah, then I go for it. I mean, I'm, of course, I'm in a pretty good position because it's my job too. And every time, even though I spend a lot of money on it, the Red Dead Redemption thing, nobody paid for it. We spent, yeah, it was just my thing. Um, um, but it's my job, even though if I don't get money from a publisher, still social media is my thing. And sometimes you just have to invest. And for example, the Superman shoot with the big crane and the helicopter oh, and stuff. Amazing. It was completely my idea. I always wanted to do that. And, uh, so I knew it, it's going to be expensive. So, and, and it was 30,000 euro, just one photo shoot. And then I was like, I don't want to pay for that. It's too expensive. And then, then I asked Warner Brothers. They have the rights to Superman, uh, copyrights. And I asked them if I can have some sponsors. Just try to find somebody who wants to give me money to be mentioned in the posts. And they said, no, nah, we are celebrating the 85th birthday of Superman this year. So maybe we can give you money. So and I said, yeah, okay, oh. then give me your money. So <laughs> it was a very good, a very lucky uh, coincidence. But um, yeah, as I said, as it is my job, I always find a solution to, to do that. Thank you for your answer. You're very I, welcome. Uh, we will have like uh, one, I think we have time for, if you can make it quick, because we have one and a half minutes left, I but see I see it. people are the queuing up I'm coming. for you. Soon, yeah. I will be there for you. So, um, so is, I think is we, anybody? we can have two, two quick questions, or tomorrow there is a chance. Another and chance tomorrow. And she is working with the tea house, so yeah. you will be there, she oh, yeah. can ask her questions. Fantastic, so, it's still confusing. So, question. All right. Yeah, hello. So, uh, first I want to make a huge thank you for uh, making the biggest uh, cosplayer encouraging video of all time. Which one? The Get It Done. 
the, the music video. Yeah, yeah the music great. video. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm glad you like it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it always encourages me too. But Fantastic. Uh, my uh, question is that: uh, What do you think of the um, cosplay uh, crossovers when? Uh, somebody puts a character into another uh, world and uh, you may recognize the character but uh, you don't know where from and uh, then uh, when uh, when the people you know, the person who wears it uh, says uh, yeah i'm here yeah i am this and this from that and that but uh, put it another uh, style and uh, and you realize that oh it's about crossovers. Yeah. crossovers. Yeah. So, in general, what I think about crossover yeah. stuff. Yeah, as I said, uh, cosplay is for everybody and just for fun. So everybody should do his or her thing. And if you do, some, if you want to do something like that, just go for it. For example, this outfit is not in the game. It's the bare armor from a concept design. Uh, I will make another a Geralt outfit, another concept design. It's not in the game. So just because I want it, I uh, we filmed a a fight scene, uh, a samurai Geralt, because just I wanted to do it, just the casual fabrics uh, samurai style. So sometimes I change stuff as well. So, and if you want to do a complete crossover, if it's male or female swap, or uh, two universes together, go for it. It's about your fun, about crafting, and uh, living your passion. So do it. Just like the emperor said, do it. <laughs> okay. So, Thank you I so think much. we You're very have welcome. to stop here, but tomorrow, tomorrow we will have the same question and answer session. So, if you didn't have the chance to ask your question, tomorrow we will be back. And I see all the people there waiting for you. You can meet Mal right away this session at Just over booth. there, yeah. So, have fun. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you so see much. See you later, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye bye, bye bye. Yes, thank we you. Mi pedig visszajövünk egy cosplay-es bemutatóval nem sokára.